We've talked about a lot of good things here. We've talked about God. We've talked about um, the Bible. We've talked about salvation and finances and um, what the church is about, uh, reaching out to people, growing, all kinds of great stuff. Let's talk about responsibility. So a common misunderstanding is that Christians are not called to be independent. We're called to be responsible. There's a difference, okay? So let's look at some definite definitions. Being accountable. So the film of blank there is accountable. Having a duty. The ability to meet obligations. Keeping your word. That's being responsible. Being accountable. Having a duty. The ability to meet obligations. Keeping your word. When, when you sign up for something at the church, actually showing up to do it and sticking with it. When you have a job, going and showing up and, and doing what you said that you were going to do. Independence is, means being to be governed by self. You're living apart from others. You are doing things your own way. You are independent. Dependence is relying solely on another. Responsible Christians are neither fully dependent or independent. We rely on each other. We rely on God, but also we are not, um, we, we don't get the last say so in our lives. And so I hope you get what I'm saying here. We're not called to be de dependent because we don't rely on the church. We rely on God and we want to learn how to, you know, get a job, provide for ourselves, manage our money well. So, typically things associated with, with, with independence. But we don't want to be independent because we're not an island. We don't exist by ourselves. We exist to be part of the church. So, uh, so that brings us to talk very quickly about a work ethic. Now, what does it mean to have a Christian work ethic? It means to live responsibly. It's not just something that you do at work. It's something you do in your life. And I do want to say this. If you are blessed enough to have a job, do not complain about your job. I know it's I know it's a thing to, to complain about your boss and to complain about your job. Remember that God blessed you with that. So maybe not good to criticize and complain about what God has given you. In everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets from Matthew 7, 12. So first off, finish what you start. As we get out of drugs, we just kind of go crazy. We try, we try and start 50 different projects. That's laziness. Responsibility sticks with it. Don't leave till you're done. The film of blank there is done. Don't expect others to finish it. You start it, you finish it. Don't take another job till this one is done. You see people do that a lot. They, they go from job to job or they'll, oh, I'll do that, no, I'll do that, and they sign up for 50 different things and they do, then they don't do any of them. Don't take another job till this job is done. Do it in a timely manner. If you said that you're going to do it, do it and finish it. Be done with it. Don't have half-finished project, product, projects. Don't take a bunch of breaks or trips. You get there you know, at whatever the start time is and you don't leave till it's done. Um, so a bunch of breaks says every 15 minutes I need to stop and smoke. You're there to work. You're not there to smoke. You're not. See, if you take smoke breaks, basically your your boss is having to pay you to smoke. So not, so, so you you're hurting your own body because smoking is terrible on the lungs. Basically asking to die with cancer in pain. By the way, um, you are taking up your your boss's time and you're not doing the job that you said you would do. So that makes you dishonest. See, as a Christian, we have to live in such a way where it's honoring to God. And to live in such a way that is honoring to God is to be responsible. So, uh, and don't 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 take trips. You know, I, I, a lot of times, okay, well, I went, to, I went to work at like 7 in the morning. But, you know, then I had to stop and go do this. And then I came back. And then I worked for a few hours. And I left again for a few hours. Get there when your boss tells you to get there. And don't leave till, they, till the job, until your work day is done. You're there to do a job. Go to work with the mindset of I'm trying to make my boss successful. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. You go to work to make your boss successful. Work with that mindset. And do it not just to make your boss successful, but as if you were doing it to God himself. Go to work whether you feel like it or not. 
See, my feelings don't dictate whether or not I go to work or not. My responsibility dictates that. I have a job to do, so I'm going to go do it. Sometimes you don't have to work. Sometimes you have to work while you're sick. I've had to do this at jobs outside of the church and jobs in the church. You don't know how many times I've had to lead worship, for instance, with either my throat is just gone, and so it's all scratchy and, and sounds bad, but I had a job to do, and I did it. Um, a lot of times I've had to do worship um, in between throwing up, one time I even took a bucket and put it behind me so in case I needed to throw up, I wouldn't throw up on my guitar on the stage. I could just turn back. Is that kind of gross? Yeah. And a lot of times you'll work at a job where they'll say, hey, just stay home. If you're going to be sick, we really don't want you here making other people sick. But um, be willing to show up. And like, for instance, if you work construction, your boss probably won't care if you show up sick. He probably wants the job done. So sometimes you do have to work while you're sick. Don't just look for reasons to call in. Do you want to be dependable? Do, do you want to be someone who is that person? That's a day-by-day a -day battle of being responsible now. Do you want to have running water, electricity, and gas? Do you want to get out of debt and have money for food? Do you want to grow spiritually? Keep these things in mind for motivation. Th those are all great motivators for, for working and being uh, uh, efficient at work. So one thing to remember in all these things is that your boss pays your bills. Oh, no, they don't. Yeah, they do. You go to work, and then he pays you, and that money goes from you to the gas company, goes from you to the electric company. The boss, Your boss pays your bills. So work as though, as though you are working for God, and would you do a better job if it was for God? So the fill in the blank there is boss. Your boss pays your bills. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says this. Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Don't give up because the going gets tough. I know one guy who, who was trying to get a job. We helped him get a job. It was a construction job, so he was going. The second day, it rained, and so he called in and said he couldn't go. The third day, he had to leave after being there for 30 minutes um, and then the fourth day he called in and said that his stomach was upset you see what I'm saying <laughs> do a better job than that as a Christian be responsible don't give up because the going gets tough it doesn't matter if your boss or others don't like you oh well, my boss doesn't like me so I quit what he's, a, he, he's not paying you to, to be likable he's paying you to do a job <laughs> well he, he just yells at me who cares he's paying you man if, if all if all if if, if you pay me every time that you yell at me? That sounds like a good deal to me. You you don't work based off others' feelings about you. You work because you need the money and you need to be responsible. You can do it. Keep your head up. I know sometimes it feels like, oh, I'm just doomed to failure. No. Uh, there was a time, probably a four-year four period, I think it was four years, when I did not get along with my boss. And... It really was, honestly, it was through no, no fault of my own. I just kind of kept my mouth shut and went along with it. Um, eventually, I ended up snapping, and I almost lost my job. But yeah, long story short, it ended up working out, and we worked things through. My moral of the story being, <sighs> you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I, I don't fool yourself into thinking that I'm somehow better than you because I'm not. Um, so don't give up because the going gets tough. James 1, 2 through 4 talks about uh, persevering in adversity. Do the best job you can when you said you would. Go out of your way to do a good job. Go out of your way. Do the very best job that you humanly possibly can do and do it when you said that you would. Did you say you do it on Monday? Well, now it's Monday and I really don't feel like doing it. Do it anyways. Don't just do the job. Do it well. And you know the difference between doing a job and doing it well. You do. Um... Do it as you would want them to do it for you. If it was your organization and you were the one who was losing money, would you want the per would you want the people who hired you to do better than what you're doing? Excuse me. Do what you would want them to do. 
Never leave an employer asking, will they finish? Like, uh, is it up in the air? Is this a thing that, that I have to worry about? Try to start and finish the same day if it's if it's at all, all possible, especially if, you're, if your boss has given you a series of things to do. Take about one minute, no more than one minute. Very quickly prioritize it according to maybe what he said or what needs to happen, and then do it. Don't sit there thinking about it. Do it. Try to start and finish the same day. You Don't leave projects running. Finish as soon as you can. Think of it like this. I am being responsible every time that I finish things. This obviously doesn't include marriage. You <laughs> you should keep the fight and keep the daily fight on that one. <laughs> um, go out of your way to work with excellence, to serve others, to do a job completely, to make someone else's job easier. Work in such a way where you make someone else's job easier. You know, we were fixing something in the church, and um, it took us three or four times longer to fix the problem because the person who had done it before us, they didn't do it right. They just did it quick and, and, and left the mess for us to clean up. And we didn't even know it was there until, you know, here we are years later. It wasn't our problem back then, but now it was our problem. We inherited a problem because someone else didn't do a good job. To make, you, make someone else's job easier, when you get stuff out, put up what you get out. Use it, then put it up. It keeps your area clean, and it prevents the thing from getting damaged. Let's say, for instance, I borrow somebody's mower. I mow my yard. Go put it back. Don't leave it, oh, well, maybe I'll get to it later today. No, do it right now. Bosses and others notice when you take care of things, and others will grow to trust you. See, if you leave stuff lying around, people will know this is somebody who leaves stuff lying around. Just real quick, look around your house and say, have I left stuff lying around? People notice. Do you have clothes that aren't put up? Do you have stuff just lying on the floor? People people notice. And here's just another idea here. Um, put it up in better condition than you found it. If you borrow somebody's motor, motor clean it off. I'm not saying spray the, mo spray the motor. That's a terrible idea. But, you know, just clean it off real quick. It'll only take a minute. Uh, if something breaks on it, either replace the thing or fix the thing that broke. Never borrow something if you are not willing to replace it if it breaks. God has entrusted you with your job. God has entrusted you with your money. God has entrusted you with your time, and God has entrusted you with your belongings. Be wise with how you handle things. Always put others' needs first. Matthew 25, 29 says, For to everyone who has more shall be given, and he uh, will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have, shall be taken away. God has entrusted you with things. Um, appreciate what you have and show that appreciation with your actions. Um, always put others' needs first. Don't get to the job thinking that they need to work around you. Go to the job thinking, I need to work around them. Not just at, at your job, but in life. Don't look at your spouse and say, how can they make my life easier? Say, how can I make their life easier? If an emergency comes up, Call your boss as soon as possible and ask for the time off. So what is an emergency? Death. House is on fire. Wife is in labor right now as we speak. That's an emergency. Um, being sick is not an emergency. Um, having your kid having a game is not an emergency. If, if you can ask for the ask for the time off weeks in advance, but don't ask for too much because eventually your boss will get tired of you constantly asking for things. Um, if you suspect your boss is going to fire you, ask how to do a better job. Don't don't be don't be a suck up, but at the same time, don't take some kind of preemptive measure and quit before he fires you. You know, if you're not doing a good job, ask him. Are you satisfied with my work? Are you, are you okay? And if not, just keep your mouth shut and keep doing your job. Apologize for any attitude or failure, and don't quit till you're fired. Sometimes it only seems like our bosses are going to fire us, and you just keep doing your job, and they're fine. Don't be afraid to ask them if they are not satisfied, or to ask why they are not why they are unsatisfied. Um, and sometimes it'll be pretty obvious, you know, they'll be like, "Well, you did that wrong, and now you have to redo it, and you're wasting the company's time." Um, 
sometimes people, well, I'm not treated very well at that job, so I, I quit. You're not there to be treated well. You're there to get paid. Don't be afraid to ask them if they are not satisfied. Give a two weeks notice when you intend to quit. Um, it looks better for the next job you go and get. Now, bosses usually won't give you a two, not two week notice when, when they're about to fire you. They'll usually fire you on the spot. Um, sometimes they won't, but still, you do the right thing even though your employer may not. Don't quit till you have a new job for sure. Oh, well, I'm supposed to get this job. No, no, no. You make sure that they're actually hiring you. You make sure that the start date is the day after you quit. That way there won't be a break in pay. And if there is a break in pay, you might not make your bills. Sometimes we convince ourselves that um, everyone is doing it. Doing drugs, talking about it, about their boss, you know, not working, etc. Maybe a group is doing it. Maybe a group that you're hanging around is is doing it. Maybe it's popular, but don't allow another person's poor decisions to become your poor decisions. You act how Christ told you act, not how everyone else is acting. Um, if all your coworkers are smoking pot in the break room, don't go into the break room. You don't have to go and rat them out. Whatever, that's your, your own conscience there, but. You don't have to go and smoke it with them. So don't let money burn a hole in your pocket. <laughs> when you work and you have a job, make sure that you uh, make sure that you you remember the the lesson on finances and, and, and you, you're responsible with your money too. Um, so let's talk about faithfulness. So on your sheet there, um, the fill in the blanks were um, your boss pays your bills. Put up what you get out. Put up what you get out in better condition. Condition. Um, the last one, not blank doing it. Not everyone is doing it. Okay, so just uh, a few things on faithfulness. A job is a commitment to your employer to show up on time and to do your best. When you take a job, that's what you are making a commitment to do. And when you don't do that, you are are breaking that commitment. Your boss liking you is not part of that commitment. A marriage, so if you look on your sheet there, a job is a commitment. A marriage is a commitment before God to your spouse for faithfulness, love, and service. You are committing to God and to your spouse that this person, you are going to be faithful to them, you're not going to cheat, you're not going to look at pornography, you're not going to do those kinds of things. You're going to love them, you're going to put them first and serve them and look out for their best interests, and once again, service. So, uh, in Mark chapter 10, verse 5 through 9, and I know that for a lot of people, these things that we're talking about in these lessons are, are new, you've never heard these things before. But uh, they are important. Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Um, so, okay. Um, if you have been divorced, if your spouse just up and left, something like that, um, there's really not much you can do once the divorce is in motion. Just move on and try and grow and try and heal. Because God doesn't want you to carry around burdens. Ministry is a commitment to God that you will um, that you will do a service. See, so in, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you see how we really have opportunities to be responsible in our whole life. We can be faithful in our job, in our marriage, in our ministry. People depend on you, and it's up to you to do a good job. Prayer and your spiritual walk are non-negotiable. You have to stay faithful to those things. You have to seek God daily for more than a few minutes. It's about uh, getting your focus on God. Uh, being responsible is not necessarily doing everything right now. See, that's actually being irresponsible. You, being responsible, you, you, you take your things and you, and you work them into a schedule. You, you, you do them. You go to the next thing. You do them. Being irresponsible is when you you can't manage things. You have to do everything right now. You don't you don't think about stuff. You just kind of go at it. Well, you don't have to do nothing, but you don't have to do everything right now. There's a there's a, a balance there. Um, don't inconvenience your boss with your favors. Sometimes people think, oh, I'm going to do something for my boss. 
but then they actually make it harder for their boss because they're like, I have to do you the favor right now. Well, what if it's not convenient for your boss? See what I mean? Um, procrastination and lazy laziness are homeboys. You know, oh, I'll do it later. Why put off till tomorrow what you can do today? I will do that, just not right now. See, we lie to ourselves. Do it now. Um, don't overcommit. You will not have enough time. There's only so much time in the day. You will burn out. You will get tired of it. You will quit. You will always let something go. So what are you going to let go by doing that? Um, so you want to try and find balance. Make a schedule and stick to it. Uh, you can't. You don't have to do everything right now, but you do have to do something. See what I mean? Uh, keep on. Keep on point. Keep keep getting stuff done. If you're not being efficient with your time, you're just kind of wasting your time and you're not making as quick as progress as you need to, learn how to start uh, doing things better. How to start uh, doing a, a quicker job with stuff. So here's just some real quick tips on how to get a job. Sometimes uh, for a lot of us, maybe you never had a job before. Um, you know, we talk a lot about getting a job. Maybe you genuinely don't believe that you can that you can work. Maybe you're just scared. Um, all those things are totally common. So don't feel like you're ah. You know, maybe your parents didn't work. Maybe you were never taught how to work. Maybe you were taught how to work and you just kind of forgot along the way. So let's let's just look at this. Let me make sure I gave you all the fill in the blanks. Commitment. That was the fill in the blank. Okay. So that takes us to the next section. How to get a job. Um, Presentation is key. So the thing is, others see me differently than I see me. Just because I think that I look okay doesn't mean that I actually look okay. So let's run, run over a few things. The fill in the blank, once again, is presentation. How you present yourself. Shower. You should smell well. They shouldn't be able to smell you when you walk in. Uh, shave. You should look professional. Um, cut your hair. Don't uh, don't just have these long this long nasty hair. Cut it, and you're probably going to get a better job with better pay. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I had I had someone that was working at this job, and they never really gave him a raise. He'd been working there for years. He even became a manager, and he barely got a raise. I walked in with a suit on and with clean shaven and with my hair cut, and um, they offered to give me a job, uh, starting with a higher pay than he had than he had as a manager after working there for years. Presentation is key. Cut your hair, wash your clothes. Um, if, if at all possible, as many of these as you can follow, it makes it just more likely that you'll get a job. Uh, stand up straight. You don't want to be slunched over. You know, it, you, when you walk in, walk in confident but not arrogant. You want this job, you're willing to work. If you give me this job, I will do the very best job that I can, that I can do. Let me try. Have a spring in your step. Don't drag your feet when you walk in. Lift them up and take take steps. Speak clear. You don't want to just find your first. They probably want you to be able to handle customers just in case. And for those circumstances, they want you to be able to look people in the face, to talk very clearly. Maybe you need to talk a little bit slower, a little bit faster, either, either or. Uh, depending on what kind of um, customers you'd be dealing with. Uh, can you handle irritations? These kinds of things. Um, show that you want the job. Show that you want the job. It's kind of like dating. When you ask somebody out, I mean, you don't just, hey, you want to go out with me? Whatever. No, it's, hey, will you go out with me? And you're all excited and you're nervous and you got sweaty palms. I mean, we've all been high schoolers before, right? Show that you actually want the job. Confident but not cocky. So, um, so now let's look a little bit about, about laziness. Laziness is basically the result or a byproduct. The result is a byproduct of little surrenders to oneself. It's a result of little compromises to please yourself. Okay. Um, so if we look at Proverbs 6, 1 through 35 is a lot. I'm not going to read all of that, um, but I encourage you to. Um, that would make this lesson very, very long. So Proverbs chapter 6, verses 1 through 35, that's the entire chapter. But he starts off, My son, if you have become surety for your neighbor, have given a pledge for a stranger, if you have been snared with the words of your mouth, have been caught with the words of your mouth, do this then, my son, and deliver yourself. 
since you have come into the hand of your neighbor. Go, humble yourself, and, and uh, impor <laughs> importune your neighbor. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. And he goes through this thing. Through the whole chapter, he's telling them, you know, in verse 6, go to the ant, observe her ways, and be wise. Having no chief, they get the job done. So remember uh, things like that. <laughs> lazy, um, the, uh, when you're lazy, this, these are just some tests of, of how to know if you're lazy. The lazy justify not working with finding obstacles or an easier way. Well, if I do it like this, if I do, it's, they spend more time thinking about the job than actually just doing it. Um, or they find a reason why they can't do it. Oh well, it's raining today. I'm not. I, I'm sick today. Uh, you know. I. You know. These little things. There's always something. There's always a reason why they can't just show up. Well, I would have shown up, but I had to do dishes. I would have shown up, but I was sleeping. I would have shown up, but there's always an excuse. Uh, well, maybe if I did it this way, oh, I'll just wait until summer to do that. If I do it now, I'll get hurt in the process. And Proverbs 26:16, it actually says something that's kind of funny. The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can give a discreet answer. <laughs> always have something to say. And uh, you don't always have something. Have to have something to say. Laziness is a gradual process. The fill in the word there is process. Um, no one wakes up and thinks, I will be lazy today. It's just little things. Hitting snooze on the alarm. Taking longer and longer breaks. You know, not getting up when you should be. Little things like that. Oh, I'll, I'll make it up later. But then, eventually, you don't. Proverbs 6, 10. See, it's, it's, it's being a kid where, you know, I'll just sleep in today and then forgetting to grow up and be an adult. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And your poverty will come in like a vagabond and your need like an armed man. Very gradual process. Laziness is brought on by soft choices. Now, what do I mean by that? Little things that just, instead of making a hard a hard decision, you're just making easy decisions. Like not working in bad conditions. I can't go outside to work. It's raining. Proverbs 20, verse 4 says, The sluggard does not plow after the autumn, so he begs during the harvest and has nothing. Because he didn't do what he should have done. He didn't plan ahead. He wasn't responsible at the time. Now it's a, he's in a time of need and he has nothing. Um, these carefully reasoned choices become a lifestyle. Eventually this, oh, I can't work here, I can't work here, I'm going to hit the snooze alarm. These little things eventually add up to it's a lifestyle now. And like most lifestyles, it's not easily shaken off. Um, in Proverbs 19, 15, it says, Laziness casts into deep sleep, and an idle man will suffer hunger. Lazy people don't value time. So the fill in the blank there is time. I'll just do it tomorrow. I'll just do it tomorrow. Live in the now. See what I mean? And I mean this in two ways. Um, first off, live in the now. It, li live today. Do today what's possible today. But then sometimes people who are lazy will tell themselves, "Oh, I, 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 I just, I just live in the moment. I, I can't worry myself about the future." So by live in the now, there's a good and a bad side of that. Um, Proverbs twelve twenty four says. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the slack hand will be put, will be put to forced labor. Being lazy really seems like it's it's a, it's easier at the time, but it, you just shoot yourself in the foot. Each day for a lazy person is as good as the next. There's no reason to worry yourself. You know, there's no reason to work hard. So lazy people don't value time. Is the fill in the blank there? The late um. The lazy does not consider that he must one day give account to the Lord. He's just completely un uncaring. Um, it, at nighttime, it's night is for sleep, regardless of whether it is earned or not. 
Um, even if the even if they have done nothing all day, hey, you know, I'll sleep whenever. Um, another thing that they do is is they stay up at night instead of sleeping. Sometimes they can't get to sleep because they've been lazy all day, so they have all this built up energy. And winter, which was supposed to be a time to enjoy the fruit of the labors and and and, and take off, you know, it, it becomes an intrusion because it it's not when he wants to be doing it. It's it's it. it well, I was going to do it now, and now I can't do it. And so it becomes a, an irritation. And eventually, he loses freedom. Eventually, he loses freedom. Make sure I'm filling in all the blanks here. I feel like I'm passing by stuff here. Okay, there we go. Um, eventually he loses freedom, you know, he, he had a job and, and now he's got a bad job at work and so he's, you know, can't do his schedule like he used to. Um, he has uh, no job now because it, when they when they took away, gave him an even lower job, he took it as an insult. Um, now he's in debt. Now he can't afford rent and now he has to, has to ask other people because he wasn't uh, able to be responsible. The lazy don't finish tasks. They overlook opportunities. Overlook is the fill in the blank there. 1227 says, um, a lazy man does not roast his prey, but the precious possession of a man is diligence. 24, 30 through 31. I passed by the field of the sluggard and by the vineyard of the man lacking sense, and behold, it was completely overgrown with thistles or reeds. Its surface was covered with nettles, and its stone wall was broken down. The lazy don't finish tasks. They overlook opportunities. Everything becomes a constant inconvenience. Job opportunities are inconveniences, and because they're not willing to put forth them, and the problem, they get stranded and stranded and stranded. See, each of our uh, decisions that we make eventually impacts another decision. But if we make a bad decision, it eventually um, gives us different options. And then we make another poor one, and we keep keep digging ourselves deeper and deeper into the problem. And instead of just putting our hand to the plow, working, we try and find excuses, and it just gets us more and more in a bigger problem. And then we don't have money, and we want someone else to bail us out of our problem. Um, job opportunities become inconveniences. Maintenance of belonging and even eating becomes inconvenience. That's just I, I can't even I can't even emphasize this enough. Even eating becomes an inconvenience. Little things becomes the biggest inconvenience. I was I was in school with one, one person. They would put the food in the microwave and it would just sit there all day. Then finally, at the end of the day, eh, well, I think it's bad now, so they threw it out. They were too lazy to even eat the food. So, Ecclesiastes 10.18. Through, uh, through indolence, the rafters sag, and through slackness, the house leaks. Okay, so when the lazy aren't sleeping, they are desiring. The, the lazy people aren't people who sit on their butt and do nothing. Lazy people desire to do stuff. They just don't actually ever follow through. Oh, I want to do this. And, and, they're, and they're, their mind gets restless, but because their body is not active, they're frustrated. They want everything, but they want to run right now. They don't want to have to put forth the time into it. They desire pleasures. So then the pleasure fulfills less and less because they keep craving to the pleasure without actually having earned the pleasure. And pleasure really only pleases us if we've earned it. If you get up and play video games all day, eventually it's just going to get to be like kind of like boring. You're constantly going to need new video games because the video games that you have, they, it just it doesn't please you like it used to. It doesn't make you happy. So pleasure fulfills less and less, produces more desire, you want more because you're not being happy, you're not being fulfilled, which causes you to be more lazy. It's just this never-ending cycle. Um, Proverbs 21, 25 through 26. The desire of the sluggard puts him to death, for his hands refuse to work. All day long he is craving, while the righteous gives and does not hold back. 
1924. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish, but will not even bring it back to his mouth. 2614. As the door turns on it on its hinges, so does the sluggard on his bed. When the lazy have jobs, they are often destructive at their jobs. It's better for the employer if he doesn't come at all, because he just does such a bad job. There's no initiative and there's no follow through. They don't they don't take the step to do a good job. And well, even when they start something, they don't follow through. They don't make sure it it, it ended well. Oh, whatever. It'll just be taking care of someone else. Um, employers transfer lazy people to less strategic positions. Lazy people usually get offended, and then they quit, and they don't have a job. Um, they create disloyalty among other people because instead of doing their job, they're they're gabbing their mouth and talking bad about the employer talk, who hired them, by the way, talking bad about you know other people, gossiping and all kinds of no nonsense, and they spread discontentment and make the boss have problems with other people. That job didn't work out because the boss didn't like me. The boss was racist, so I picked on me. Who cares? You're not getting paid to have a perfect boss. You're getting paid to do a good job. And Proverbs 18.9. He also who is slack in his work is brother to him who destroys. 10.26. Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the lazy one to uh, to those who send him. Laziness causes fear, which causes laziness. Fear of no food, sleep to remedy, lazy people try to get others to, to provide for their food, gas, and other needs. Lazy people resort to anger if others don't help, which usually comes from the irritation of their situation or their actions. So then they're afraid because nobody will help them, so then they sleep to remedy, so then lazy people try to get other people to provide their food. It's your problem. You need to take care of it. So what we do is we uh, we stress ourselves out. It's it's not something to stress yourself uh, self out about. I have to do the exact same thing. You get up, you go to work, you work. Then you get paid to work. Then you manage your money. Um, Twenty two thirteen. It's actually more it's actually more de more destructive to provide for a lazy person. I know. Oh, but I love them. If you really love them, you will help them by not giving them money. The sluggard says, there's a lion outside. I'll be killed in the streets. They just make up reasons that they can't work. All of this developed because he slowly chose pleasure over hard work. That's how laziness works. Our lives will either be in a place of challenge or a place of just floating by. And here's the thing. Don't make yourself feel like you're a whole lot better than someone else. All are prone to laziness. Anybody can, can learn to be lazy. Anybody. So instead of making sure that everyone else is being what you want them to be, you be responsible. You be the kind of Christian that and, and worker that people are, are glad to have on their team.